Good morning, everybody. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and a good night. I am King Piggly. This is Gaming Imperfectly, and welcome to the channel. And if you're new to the channel, I hope you like what you see. We're going back. Another missing 411 case. This one even more baffling than the last. Mys mysteries abound in the missing 411 phenomenon. If you don't know what that is, the missing 411 series of books is by a guy named David Politis, who was a police officer for over 35 years, as well as a detective for 20 plus years. When he retired from being a police detective, he started noticing a huge amount of people went missing every year in this country and around the world from national parks and wilderness areas and things like that and just gone vanished and sometimes they're found sometimes they're not found sometimes they're found alive sometimes they are found in places that they should never have could have gotten to but are and sometimes they're found deceased but still how they disappeared is a mystery and if you want to know more about david politis and his stuff i'll leave a link in the description below where you can find out more about david politis his books and he also has a youtube channel so go check him out but stick around, guys, because this case is completely cuckoo, and it's going to just make you go, what? He had an exemplary life. He was a father of three, and he had been married to his wife, Beverly, for 56 years at the time of his disappearance. Tom was 82 years old. He had been a member of the 82nd Airborne Division, which is an elite group of paratroopers out of Fort Bragg, North Carolina, here in the United States. Um, and Tom taught survival courses uh, in the wilderness, as well as hunter safety courses. And one of the true passions of his life was, in fact, hunting and being in the outdoors. Tom was super experienced. And again, remember, he taught hunter safety and survival courses. Tom um, was a, a devoted father, and he loved taking his family uh, when he wasn't working. And eventually, once he retired, his still joy, his kids had grown up, to get the family together and to go hunting. Now, they were from uh, right outside of Albany, New York, but they had a timeshare at this place called Brant Lake in upstate New York. And they would drive every once in a while, the few hours that it took them to get there, and they had a timeshare cabin that they split with some friends of theirs at Brant Lake, and they would go to it once a year at least to go hunting. And they had been doing this, guys, for over 50 years. 50 years they had been doing this in the same place. And on this particular November, um, Tom and his son... And a bunch of their friends, in fact, there were seven men all together, decided to go to this hunting cabin, spend some time there, and do some deer hunting. So they all geared up. They went out there. Everything was normal. They had a blast, that kind of thing. Well, on this particular day, November the 15th, they had plans to go to this other place that was a little bit of a drive away from their hunting cabin, but they had still, this whole area, guys, they had been hunting in for over 50 years as far as Tom was concerned. He had been going there for well over 50 years, 55 years to be exact. Tom had been hunting in this area. So when Sid, who was Tom's best buddy, said, hey, let's go hunt over by Lily Pond and a Lily Lake, he said, no problem, let's go. They got out there. In fact, this was a such an easy hunting place, guys. This wilderness area in particular, which I believe is called Lake George Wilderness uh, or area, um, it was drivable. Like, there was a road, well-maintained. So they did. They hopped in their vehicles. They drove to where they were going to hunt. And, in fact, from where they were hunting, a hundred feet behind them was the road. That's how far off the road they were, just a hundred feet. They didn't go deep into the wilderness. So when they got out there, Tom had a, a 30 30 which is a high-powered rifle, and so did all the other men. And they realized that one thing struck them all as odd. And even Sid and Tom's son, who have both been interviewed and everything else, everybody there that day said the forest was just abnormally quiet. Um, even when you, if you're a hunter or you spend time in the woods just hiking, you understand that when you first go into a woods as a human being, the forest has a tendency to go silent. But if you sit there for a while, the sounds and the ambience of nature usually come back. Crickets chirping, frogs croaking, birds chirping, the whole shebang. And in this case, these guys noticed that when they were out there and as they were out there, there was no sound, and it never came back. 
But when they first got there, they left the vehicle behind. They all got together and they agreed that something that would make it easier to hunt because of the drive and what time of the day it was, it was around 2 o'clock in the afternoon. And they had done some hunting earlier in the day, but they had the drive and everything else, and they just kind of wasted some time. So to kind of make things easier, they decided to set up a hunting line. And for the younger guys of the group, because remember, Tom and his buddies are in their 70s and their 80s. Tom's 82. They decide to let the old timers kind of set up in this firing line. And so they staggered hunters every 100 yards. Now, 100 yards may seem like a long distance, guys. It's the length of a football field. However, if you're at one end of a football field and somebody else is at the end of another football, or, you know, at the other end of the football field, you can still see each other pretty clearly. Now, this is in the woods, so no, they can't really see each other that great. There's a lot of forest between you at 100 yards apart. But still, four men sat 100 yards apiece. Now, all of these men had walkie-talkies, guys. They had ways of communicating with one another, and in fact, they were communicating with one another. Uh, to a minimum, though, because you can't make tons of noise when you're hunting. None of the men had been consuming alcohol at this point in time, other than a couple of beers by the younger guys earlier in the day during lunch. By this time, it was 2 o'clock. Nobody was inebriated. There was no hunting accidents to be had. And remember, guys, Tom taught hunter safety. It's what he did. Even in his retired age, Tom knew what he was doing in the woods. Probably better than most. Um, so before they left the car, they all agreed to meet back at the car after a, a set period of time. And, uh, they, even Tom's son and the guys, Tom was the last man in the line. So if you had four men sitting in a row, Tom was on the far left side of, of this line. And Sid was a hundred yards away. So Tom's best friend of over 20 years was sitting right there next to him 100 yards away. And then, of course, there was another guy 100 yards from him and another guy 100 yards from him. Tom's son and Sid walked Tom to where he was going to be sitting and said, okay, you know, we'll see you later. And they went off. The, the younger of the guys went to around the mountain up to the top of a ridge and then tried to, the way this works is, push any animals, deer or otherwise, that may be in that area push them towards the line of hunters that are down in the valley in the area. That way, these guys could get a shot at a deer. So, that's what they did. But again, to ultimate strangeness, Tom's son and all the other hunters that day said they saw zero wildlife. There was nothing. There was no sounds. However, it has gone down with the police record and the statements given that Sid remembers clearly hearing about 150 feet away from him a zapping sound, a very weird sound. He said it was loud. It only happened once, but it, it, the closest thing he says that he had never heard before. It's a sound he said he had never heard. He thought it was strange, but he heard this whooshing but zapping sound was the closest word he said he could use to describe what he heard. Uh, but he only heard it once, and then was never heard again. All right? The allotted time came. There was no sign of deer. They had no luck hunting. And when the allotted time came for them to meet back at the car, all the men showed up, except for Tom. At that point in time, they started calling out to him, because remember, they're 100 feet off the road and probably an extra 100 yards away. So 100 yards plus 100 feet away from where Tom was sitting. They went out to where Tom was sitting because they wouldn't answer any calls, and there's no Tom, no sign of him at all. Then they started getting a little concerned, so they started upping the search just a bit. They actually fired their weapons up in the air trying to get a response because if you're hunting and you get lost, your firearm can actually save your life by firing it up in the air to alert people where you're at. But in this case, they're firing the weapon up in the air to get Tom's attention, but Tom's not responding. So, by 4.30 in the afternoon, guys, they have gone out to get help. He's lost. They can't find anything. They notify the authorities. And by 5.30 in the afternoon, sheriffs, deputies, and such had arrived on scene. This uh, kicked off a massive search. And I'm not talking about just a few hundred people. I'm talking about thousands of people came in to look for Tom. 
Ultimately, the strangest part of this, guys, is not just the number of people that they had looking for him. And I'm talking about dog teams, SAR, which is search and rescue teams, multiple agencies. At the end of the day, the search for Tom is still ongoing. It's still an open case, even though it happened in 2015. They're still looking into what happened to Tom. And over 50 agencies were involved in looking for him. Tens of thousands of hours, man hours, and not only that, a huge search area when it came to uh, helicopters and, and rescue. But the, the, the strangest part of this was is that about five days into the search for Tom, um, the FBI showed up. This was really odd, guys. Again, we've talked about this before, like in the Dennis Martin case where FBI shows up and Green Berets show up, you know, which is just... There's only two times in missing person cases ever in the history of the United States where the Green Berets, Special Forces units, have shown up. But weird also is that the FBI show up in missing person case. Even more weird, guys, is why did the FBI show up to look for a 82-year-old missing hunter with no signs of foul play after only being missing for five days. And, and on record, when David Politis was looking into these cases and asking questions and requesting under the Freedom of Information Act all the information that, that these agencies had on the disappearance of Tom Mezek, um, nobody, could, nobody could answer the question of who called the FBI in the first place. Nobody knows. How did the FBI even get notified that this... I mean, guys, a lot of people go missing every year in this country. And the FBI don't show up. You know, they have to expect weird foul play for them to show up. And in fact, uh, Beverly Mezik, Tom's wife of 56 years, did in fact talk to FBI agents. And from her account was, they said that they suspected that something wasn't right with this, and so that's why they were there. But until more evidence came forward, they weren't allowed to discuss why they were there or what they thought was happening. And ultimately, they never did. They never told her anything, and they left, only stating that they thought something was off about this case. Well, this case particularly, I absolutely 100% agree with all of it being off. Because it is completely baffling why and how Tom disappeared in the first place. He was blind in his right eye because in his youth, um, after his time of service, Tom had an accident with some explosives that he was messing with. And it actually hurt his right hand and he lost his right eye due to it. So Tom had was blind in his right eye, all right, but he was 82 years old. He also had a heart condition. So the initial response when he disappeared, or initial thought when he disappeared, was that they were going to find him dead of, of medical condition or age or something like that out in the woods. But to this day, guys, no sign of Tom Mezek has ever been found. Not a trace. Dogs couldn't pick up his scent. Nothing was ever... His firearm was never found. And so it's completely, completely baffling. I have no understanding of how this happens. How do these people who, you know couldn't go anywhere, couldn't get up and move, 82 years old. If he did get up and just wander off, which is just a really silly thing to do when you're hunting and there's people with guns sitting right there and you hear a snap of a twig and you get shot, you know, there's a reason why they were sitting in a, in a hunting line because each man knew that there was nothing in front of them or behind them. They knew that where the other hunters were for safety's sake. And a man that teaches hunters safety isn't just going to get up and start wandering off. Two, he's 82, so even if he did get up and go wander off, how far is he going to get? And last but not least for me, the ultimate strangeness of this is what was that zapping sound? Why no trace of him has ever been found? And who called the FBI? And why did they say that they were there but never told anybody why they were there and just left? Guys, I am i don't know. These cases just really... Um, I, I enjoy reading about them because I am fascinated by it, but it leaves me just completely scratching my noggin. I would love to hear your opinion on this. Leave me something in the comment section below. I'd love to hear your uh, opinions on what you think are happening. And guys, I don't care what you believe as far as that is concerned. We're all entitled to our opinion. Some guys have responded to my comment section that it's aliens. Some have said Bigfoot. Some have said the government are taking people and that the military are taking people. Some say that David Politis is involved in this in some way, shape, or form. 
Whatever the case may be, I love hearing your opinions, and I don't naysay anything you're saying, okay? Leave me something. I love hearing from you. But that's it for King Piggly today. Thank you so much for supporting the channel, and I hope you enjoyed this. If you did, please click that like button. And if you're new to the channel and you've been here this long, I hope you'll consider subscribing. Keep coming back, hanging out with me for more strange tales of the dark and spooky and the mysterious. But that's it. I'm out of here. And I will see you guys in the next video.